Grad, what's going on, man? How are you? Doing good, man. How you doing, Porter? Doing good. How uh, how are things this morning? Very good. Very good. Pumped. Pumped. I'm 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 pumped, dude. Do you like that pic that I posted? I I I figured it looked similar to you, so I just had to post it. <laughs> I cracked up. I had to laugh. I love it, dude. Well, Brad, tell us a little bit about are you where where are you living right now? I'm in Chipley, Florida. Chipley, Florida. I love I'm it. In the panhandle. The panhandle. I love it. And uh Brad, I guess let's just start out. I think you've been interviewed before, haven't you? Yes. Like, you've been on I here. Do. Yeah, I don't know. Have I interviewed you on in this group before? You did. Okay, I love it. But this is this is good because this isn't like obviously this is not your first rodeo. This is like you've you've hopped on a few bowls before and you know what you know what's going on. So tell us a little bit about your circumstances, like kind of refresher, like what you do for work. Like let's just kind of get like an overview of like where you're at uh, as a as a as a person. Okay. So uh I've owned a software company for 25 years, um, you know, so it, it intrigued me when I started hearing Nick talk about that path in his world, because I'd already been down that path. Um, but I, I got disillusioned with it probably eight years ago, just pissed off at the whole industry and just didn't want to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so I moved and started being a handyman. You know, I had real estate rentals that I already had. So I had a lot of tools because I did my own work on my own properties. So I thought, okay, I've got the tools. I'll just move into that and make some money doing that and, you know, make my own schedule. So, you know, I've been self-employed my whole life. So, you know, I, I kind of get, it, it's not hard to start a new business. I've started many, some were okay. Some did good, some failed. So I do have a lot of experience from that respect, um, but I jumped into digital real estate almost two years ago. It'd be two years next month in another group, a different group, um, and that group was focused on ranking and renting. So I basically realized very early on in that group that it's going to be six months before something ranks to a point where I'm going to be getting enough leads to actually sell it and make any money. So that's when I first saw what you're wearing today, Money Love Speed. And I'm thinking, okay, that sounds like something interesting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so it didn't take me long to jump into this group, Nick's free group. Um, and and I'll be honest, I, I didn't spend much time in the free group. I jumped mm -hmm. straight into the paid group because I knew just based on what I was hearing that this was what it, exactly what I was looking for. Because, yeah. you know, I was already sold on the rank and rent model. I had software in my background. I didn't really do this type of work. I was more into uh, business software solutions and putting financial software in big companies. So, you know, it was a it was a stretch to a little degree, um, you know, different, different technology, different focus, different model. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, basically, I just jumped in and got busy and. Uh, you know, I, I kind of was looking for shortcuts everywhere. You know, I'm I'm listening to some of the calls and I'm like, man, I can't even listen to some of this stuff. I got to move. I, I got to do something. I can't listen to some of this, you know, stuff that I, I was hearing. I was like, I just, I, I got to move. Um, so I did some things that were not advisable early on. I bought some sites from a, a student that was quitting the other group I was in. Uh, I thought that was going to jump me to 20 sites really fast. And then, you know, uh, I, I just had the wrong idea. I thought that would be a fast way to get going. Uh, unfortunately, her DD was not that great. And, uh, you know, I found myself wasting about six months trying to make those sites work. And it, it was just really a bad idea all the way around. But, you know, uh, I've learned a lot. And, uh, you know, I guess... I know Nick's approach is fast, fast, fast. And I wanted that. And I thought with my background, I would be really fast, but then life happens. And mm -hmm. sometimes that's not the reality. And uh, I guess the message I've been trying to figure out what is my message to this group today to help some of these people take the next step or uh, stop doing what they're doing. That's stopping them. Cause I've done all that. And mm -hmm. I'm the perfect example. I'm almost two years in and I'm just hitting the 10K a month mark. Uh, so to answer your question, that's where I'm at right now. I'm mm -hmm. about 10K after this 3K deal. Um, 
but I've learned a ton along the way and everything you can do to add to your arsenal, you should do, you know, but take imperfect action every day. You got to do something every day. It's a business. It's a real business. And some people just poke a stick at it. Yeah, no, it's so true. Well, and I think that this, this phrase is like, it, it's good to a point because you can't go so fast that you, you look past your, um, your due diligence or like the things that really need to be done, but you really do need to focus on like, Hey, like, what am I just poking at? And what do I need to like really focus on and spend my time on? Right. And, and I think Nick does a good job of emphasizing that all around. He's like, spend your time on this. Don't worry about that. And, and so we should move quickly, but that's cool that you've done that though, because I, I take you Brad to be the guy that like, you're just like, I'm just going to do it. Like you're just a doer instead of just a, like, I know you think about it, but I feel like you're, you're a lot like, Hey, let's just try it out. Let's do it. Like you'll start a business. You're not afraid of, of what could happen. And I feel like I, some of us you, were held back because we're like, Oh, what if it doesn't work? Or what if this doesn't work? You know what it I'm saying? Have that it's, mind. A, it's a learning experience. Yeah. So, it's, you know, I, I saw some people post some comments about I'm waiting to have some extra money to do this, you know, yeah. uh, spend a couple hundred bucks, save a couple hundred bucks, throw a simple call ad out there, get a lead and go talk to a business owner. Cause the okay. bottom line is until you start doing that, it's not going to happen anyway. It's so and, true. Uh, you know, this 3k deal, I just popped, you know, the way that I got this deal was by listening to four business owners in a row that failed, that didn't work. Okay. But mm -hmm. I didn't get discouraged by that. I just went to the next one, you know, and uh, lo and behold, the one that I landed was somebody I gave free leads to a year ago. That's so crazy. So came back they, around. That's they ghosted me. I built a second site just for them. And then they ghosted me. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. Yeah. But you know, next thing I know, I'm getting an email in my inbox saying nothing. All it was cryptic. All it said was advertising. And what what ended up happening is they were drafting an email and they ended up sending me the draft instead of the finished email. And I'm getting this email. I'm like, what the hell? Is, where are they coming That's from? I mean, it's been a year since I've talked to these people, and here they are in my inbox. Dude, so I called him, had a five minute conversation. I got more information from that five minute conversation. And then I put together a screencast based on all the training I've gotten out of Nick's course. And the screencast just, you know, I knew I wasn't going to give them free leads again. I've already done that. No reason to do that again. That's why they came back because they remembered my leads were good and they made money. Yeah. Okay. There's somebody wanting to give me money now. <laughs> uh, so, you know, I thought, okay, I'm not giving them free leads. I'm just going to go in for the kill right now. I'm just going to go for the juggler. I sent them a, a sign up form. I sent them the credit card authorization form and a screencast. Here it is. This this is it. Either spill it out or go away. I'm not dealing with it again. Yeah. I'm, not starting, I'm not starting over with you. Yeah. You know? So, uh, but the beauty of it is I, I knew the market. Okay. So sometimes we get bogged down and, you know, I mean, I've got 40 sites. I'm, I'm jumping to the one closest to popping, you know, that's where I'm spending my time. I've got four or five going at a time where any one of them could pop with a business owner that's already on the hook. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for the right sign to close, uh, you know, so I'm busy in that area. Well, this is one that was just back in the background. I had, wasn't even focusing on it. And that's the thing, you know, sometimes we get busy and we're focused in other areas and we got stuff going on. You know, I've seen people post things about, well, should I just get rid of that website and move on? Hell no. What's your carrying cost? 30 bucks, 20 bucks, 10 bucks. I don't know. I don't even know what it is anymore, but, you know, just leave it out there. Let it stew. And eventually something may come of it, you know. Someone's going to see your side. It's not like it's, it's going to go to waste. I mean, sometimes if your due diligence is terrible, but like I said, if you're doing everything right and you're going slow, sometimes it's just like you need to get out of your funk. Like <clears throat> sometimes we get so focused on one website and we can't find a business owner. And I, I'm just as bad because you get so emotional to one website and you're like, no, like this is my oldest one. I want to sell it. And then you don't. 
But the best thing you could do is just stop. Just stop doing it and go get a new one. Try that one, get a deal, and then exactly. come back to it. Right? Exactly. Like, exactly. There's more to be made. Just move to where the money is. It's exactly and, right. You know, once you get that fast money coming in, it's it makes it a whole lot easier to go back and look at the things that might be able to be brought back up, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, the due diligence was terrible for this because it's an extremely expensive market. Mm. But you know, having played in it now for a year, I understood that. And yeah. I knew who the players were. So when I got on the phone with this guy, I'm talking to him about who's the big guy in the neighborhood. You know, mm -hmm. he knows who the big guy is. I know who the big guy is. So all I did in the screencast is compare him to the big guy and showed him how badly he was being dwarfed by everything this bigger company was doing. Yeah. And I'm like, look, if you want to get in the game, it's going to cost some money. Yeah. Well, the beauty of this $3,000 deal is the call was talking about $5,000. So we spent most of the time talking about how he needs to be spending five grand. Well, he let it slip that he's already done that a couple of times. So there's no question in my mind, he's on a six month deal at 3,000. At the end of that six months, it's immediately going to five. Immediately. Yeah. And he already knows it. That's, We've already talked about it. So that's so, all from knowing your market. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So this isn't your other deals. Like, is this your biggest deal that you have? Or do you have another one that's, I think you have a, a, a 2000, right? Do you have a $2,000? Yeah, I got a 2K, uh, T, 2K uh, insulation deal. I've got some towing that are a thousand each. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, those are, those are my big deals for sure. Uh -huh. So with this $3,000 deal, like I know you said, Hey, like, here's your stuff, like take it or leave it. Like you, you kind of didn't go through the normal process, but like, do, do you ever get nervous with, with dropping the price at, at that big, like maybe not you, but like, could you see someone that maybe hasn't gotten a deal and you're like, dude, I don't even know if this works. Like, how do you overcome the fact that like, this is, you're asking someone for three grand? Well, I mean, the only thing I can say is before I had those deals, I was borrowing the confidence of others. Yeah. So, you know, Nick's got plenty of examples in his program where you can, you can, you know, granted, we all know Nick's got confidence over the top. Yeah. Okay? We <laughs> yeah. all aren't going to be Nick. You know? <laughs> I'm never going to be Nick. I'm not going to go out and, and, and take that same approach, but it's proven. I mean, all you got to do is be in this group long enough to understand it's proven. There's countless examples. Yeah. So if you haven't done it, it doesn't matter. You're in a group of people who have done it. Yeah. And I talk about this group as if it's a, I mean, we do meet every week. So, you know, I tell people, I've told business owners, well, hey, you know, if something's not working, we're going to pitch it into the group. I'm, I'm in a group with hundreds of people hundreds of people all with the same focus in the same direction. We'll and if we out. don't have something working, we're going to figure it out together yeah. and we're going to solve that problem together. And then we're going to implement the results of that. Huh. So, you know, take advantage of the pool that you're in to gain that confidence just by being part of the group. Yeah. Claim it. You're part of it. Just claim it. Yeah. Well, and, and I like you don't need you don't need to figure, really figure it out yourself to know it works, because every day, every week I get on here with somebody else that, that's gotten another like their first deal. It's like, dude, it, it's still happening. Concrete's still available. Like, it, yeah, everything is hard. But like if, if more people do it, but like it's not like it's not possible. Right. Like everything, everything is still open. And so I think a lot of people just are so caught up in their mind, whether it's like, I don't have enough money. Well, you, you kind of crush that objection where it's like, dude, spend 200 bucks, like save up for like, stop eating out for a week. Right. And use that money to. to That's to the lamest that. excuse out there. Lame. Yeah. And, and it's so true. It's like, dude, you literally have no excuses. And, and, and I just love the fact that you're just like, just do it. Like, I don't know why we're overthinking this whole process. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I'm self-employed, but <laughs> time, I'm on my third time now of becoming 100% in this business. Okay, uh -huh. three times. That means three times it didn't work. Yeah, I had to go back to work and start taking jobs again. Yeah. Well, every time I do that, it takes me away from my focus. So, you know, one of these times, like now, I think it's going to stick and I'm never going back.
Yeah. So that's when it really becomes, you know, uh, it, it took a long time to see 10K a month be reality. But now that I'm here, 20K doesn't really seem that far away. Mm-hmm. And at 20K, that's when things are really going to change for me because, you know, I've got, I've got a, I'm 58 years old. I got a stack of bills every month. You know, I've, I've got life that's caught up to me. So, you know, sometimes I just have to go back to work and make some more money to, sometimes I go back to work just to make enough money to pay my ad budget. That's okay. You know, if I don't have enough people paying it and I want to test some more markets, I'll go do some jobs and make some money and put it in the ads. Yeah. You do what you got to do. You do. And, and the payout's so awesome. Like the, what, what you don't understand is there the, the first deal, like we, like I, I talk about with everybody, it changes the game. It changes your mindset. It changes your like perspective on this whole thing. Because I remember just first starting, I was like, e- even if I get a couple deals, like to have three grand, like that would be awesome. Right. Like you just like, that's cool. Well, then you get two and you're like, well, why not 10? Well, wh- why not 20? It's a numbers game at this point. Yeah, I know. It's like, well, well, why not this? Like, why are you stopping at a certain point? Like, as long as you have the means to do it and you have the, the resources or whatever, then I don't see why that's not possible. Yeah, and I, I want to make another point. Uh, I heard you at the beginning before I got brought in. I was on the, the Facebook Live. Um, I heard you talking about, you know, uh, if you wait too long, then all of a sudden there's all these other sites popping up. Well, I had a concrete site that I was, I, I was two of, of the uh, lead gens in the area when I built it. Uh-huh. And the one that I saw wasn't really doing anything. So it must've been, it might've been an old one that somebody had just dropped and wasn't really active uh-huh. on there the other day. Cause I finally got a guy paying me some commission for some work. Uh, cause I'll take commission deals too. I don't care how people pay me. I'm going to take the money. You know, I, mm. I've, I've been doing some commission deals for a while and some of them work and some of them don't, but you know, it's just another opportunity. If you got a site sitting out there, why not? Yeah. And you're uh, producing leads. Yeah. So anyway, I went out there the other day, there's two more sites now. So oh yeah. don't it's wait, cool. people don't sit around on your laurels cause there's <laughs> coming for you. It's They're so coming cool. for niche market. Well, and another thing I want to hit on is like, there's going to become a point where I, I don't know, like when, but like, there's going to come a point where you're going to have to like go against some lead gens and it's okay to be two or like second or third on page one. Like, that's fine. But like, d- like, don't go into that. Like if, if there, th- there's some, there's some honey holes that we're not looking at, like don't settle for that. But like, there have been plenty of times like Brad, like I have been gone and I'm like ready. Well, I've waited two days. And, and then I literally, I go and look at ads one more time and I see people running ads and they look like, like in the group, I'm like, oh crap. Like I was literally this close to having it. Cause like everyone turns back. That'll and teach you. Someone in the group, you're like. That'll teach you to take it an extra day. <laughs> I know. It's like, no, it can't wait. You better get that crap done now. That's right. <laughs> That's so funny. That's right. Um, okay. So what, what is, what is your, your whole what does your business look like now, Brad? Like, how are you um, prioritizing? Like, what do you spend most of your time doing? And what are you doing to like scale your business right now? No, like having 10K right now? Well, so, you know, I'm getting ready to jump on the VA train. I mean, I haven't done it yet. I've been really close a couple of times, but I'm, I'm at a point where I'm getting bogged down by some SEO stuff and some other things that I don't really want to spend my time doing. Um, I have zero problem getting on the phone with business owners. So that's not my, my issue at all. Um, I just need more opportunities to do that. So I'm going to start, start getting in the VA pool and, and add some people to, to get some other things off my plate, but I'm new to the SEO thing. I mean, I, I was bouncing back to handyman work so many times I thought, okay, I could be doing SEO instead of this. And I could be doing commission on some of these other sites instead of this. So uh, I've only recently begun doing those things and I've already got uh, three SEO clients and uh, a couple of website builds. So just things to add a, a few extra thousand bucks to not have to go back and do some other things to generate more money for ads. So yeah. that's the deal. So that, that's, I'm kind of scaling those things, but I mean, I've got commission guys bringing me new commission guys. They're, they're talking about what I'm doing for them to their buddies. And then their buddies are calling me saying, Hey, can you build a site for me in this market? I'm like, well, sure, sure. I can. Let's yeah. do it. 
you know? Yeah. So that's a beautiful thing when your clients start bringing you new clients. So, oh yeah. Yeah. That's starting to happen. So, well, and that reminds me, I remember watching a video that Nick did the other day and he was like the fastest way to grow is by referrals. Like literally, like if you can have your business owners talk to their friends and their friends, then you're going to start to grow. And I actually had that happen the other day. I was, I was just like working, like I'm still farming. So I was, I was on the old tractor and I remember I got this call from a client that actually had dropped, like had not like had kind of dropped me was like, Hey, like, I just don't want to do it right now. So I was like, all right, whatever. So I was like, kind of not even thinking about this guy. Well, he called me and he's like, Hey Porter, like I have a friend in such and such city that does this. Like I told him how great you were before. Like he'd love to talk to you. So lo and behold, this guy, like now I'm starting to do research for his friend and I'm not even working with him. And he, he just referred me out of nowhere. He's like, Hey, I trust this guy. Like I'm not doing it right now, but like, you know, like he's great. You can trust him, whatever. And I was like, wow, that is pretty cool that your literally your impression on how like good of a business partner you are to this guy like exactly. it's gonna go a long ways like maybe not in a year or or whatever but like down the road those questions are going to be brought up like how many times do you talk to people and you're like oh like what do you do for work and then it like kind of goes down the rabbit hole of like where are you getting your work like you know what i'm saying like there's these conversations sure. are going to be brought up that if you're a good business owner and you know what you're doing Th those are like the simplest ways to get clients. Yeah. And, and to be honest, you know, nobody should ever burn a bridge in this business. I mean, yeah. there's been times when I've given free leads to a guy and I'm, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my head, I just, you know, I can't stand working with this guy. Nice. I mean, I know I don't want to do this long term because he's an ass or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I still don't burn that bridge because, you know, at the end of the day, when I know we're separating or I'm doing the pullback, I'm just saying, hey, I hope you made some money. I hope I helped you out. I hope I helped your business. Good luck to you. I'm moving on, you know, and, you know, leave it like that because that guy may be referring you to somebody else or he's talking about you. You may not know it, but he's talking about you to somebody else and they may call you out of the blue. It's happened to me numerous times. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I always think like, you, well, and sometimes I even think this like, oh, this city, it's so big. Like if I just tell this guy off, like who's going to know? Right. Well, this world is pretty small and you are yeah. going to, I, in your, I've had times where I haven't done, said anything bad, but like, I kind of was just a little bit peeved at one of these business owners and another guy that I had actually like a client that I landed was like, Oh yeah. Old, old so-and-so was like, I was working with him and like, they kind of didn't like him either, but I was like, Oh geez. Like, I'm glad that I didn't say anything bad because even if they don't like him like if someone's talking bad about someone i'm like bro is it really is it them or is it you right that that's the problem you know what i'm saying like it's it's social just media will bite you yeah, i know it's so true but it was like just just watch your mouth don't burn a bridge even though there's so many times where you want to just be like like f off dude i'm i'm not doing this like you, you right. literally taking all these leads and you won't even hop on a call yeah. like we have all the excuses or, or all the reasons why we could do that, but it's like, don't burn a bridge because someone's going to find out. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Do you have any other things you want to add? I'm just going to look through these comments, see if we got anything real fast. No, I'm just trying to figure out the best way we can help people move forward. Exactly. Well, I love that. Let's, let's ask some people. We got 17 people on. What are some, why are you guys not landing deals? Like be honest with yourself. Like, is it money? Is it your time? Like what is holding you guys back from getting deals? I really want to hear your guys' uh, reasoning. Let's see. Aaron said in some sort of way, perfection is a big enemy because it causes you to usually take no pr uh, progress. Yes. So true. Jason said, I just started, but got hit with a suspension right off the bat. Still trying to appeal it. Do I hold off on all the other campaigns until this one is resolved? So I, I don't think you can, you can't even run any ads if you're, if one says, no, you know, you can, right? On your, your ads, you, you do can. A different account. Yeah, you could do a different account, but uh, I mean, I, I would, you should be able to get that on, like appealed pretty fast. Like I, I appealed it like two or three times when I got mine and it was like a week. But in the meantime, go build another site. Yeah. Don't, don't just wait because your momentum is going to slow down. Um, rinse and repeat always always rinse and repeat so true 
All right. Anyone else have any questions? I they got 14 people on. Let's let's hear a question. I'm gonna start calling people out here. Andrew Fisher, dude. I haven't I haven't seen you in a while. Got any questions for for Brad? We got Thomas, Lawrence, Eric, Amy, um, Gabriel. Guys, this is your literally like a free chance to just ask away. I'm giving you guys the, the floor here. So I guess we'll give them, give them a few minutes. If not, it's their loss. Um, so one more question. What was the, what, what's been like the best thing about this business model? Like, I just love hearing like, um, like why you're doing this. Like, what, why not stick to you? handyman why not stick to your other job like why are you so adamant about this uh this has the biggest potential i mean in all the in all the businesses i've done in the past i've always looked for residual income you know residual is huge because you keep getting paid for the work you did and you're not doing any new work per se i mean yeah. <clears throat> there's stuff to do of course but you know I mean, I know Nick's got accounts he's had for years that are just paying, 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 paying. I know the other group I'm in, they've got tons of people that just have stuff that they don't do anything anymore and they still get the money every month. So that's a beautiful model. Um, none of my other business, my, my wife and I have four businesses between us. And to be honest, none of them have the potential that this one does. So I'm looking to get this one as the primary and just shut the others down and just do this full time. So that's the goal. Um, and financial freedom, baby. That's where I'm headed. I mean, uh, you know, I'm at the later stage in life. So, you know, I don't have all those big aspirations of building a big company. I've already done that. I'm not interested in doing it again. I've had the big house. We sold it to move to Florida, you know, uh, I've got a condo on the beach that I enjoy on weekends. So, you know, uh, yeah. I love it. No, that's, that's true. Well, I think we're all, I, hopefully everyone, I, I hope you don't do this as a hobby because your hobby is going to be shut down real quick. Yeah. There, there is no hobby in this. There, it's a real business. There is real work to do. So yeah. if you poke it like a hobby, you're, you're going to be, you'll probably be longer than my two years trying to get yeah. herbs, you know, yeah. I'll be all in. Um, oh, and what was, what was your niche? What was that? What was that, uh, niche that you went into the other day? You tree, told, ser tree service for the three. K. You're, there's still tree service out there. Oh, dude, I've got 10 of them. And, you know, I mean, I've got 10 of them that are open and I've got two more in this same expensive area. So I may yeah. just try and do the same thing several more times, get another two or three, three K's in. Okay. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of opportunity. So. So, yeah. so stop worrying about if, if the niche is good. I feel like we, we overthink the niche part so much. It's like, just pick one. Yeah, I mean, tree service and concrete are getting saturated to a degree, in my opinion. But, you know, there's still places to find. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to work hard. You got to work. You got to do your DD. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so we got a few questions here. It says, he said, Adam said, what's a hot niche for 2024? You know, I'm still, I'm, I don't, I don't know if there is a, is a hot one yet. I don't know. Have you heard of yeah, any? I'm not sure, you know, uh, uh, probably something obscure. Uh, IV drips. IV drips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's probably something that we don't even know. Yeah. Some, something crazy. Um, okay. I love it. Okay. So Daniel said, uh, you're getting your SEO deals from calling or from referrals. Uh, I have two front, one was a friend that just started a business and needed help. And I just, you know, I, it was a no brainer for me. Mm -hmm. Uh, one was a referral. One was a guy that I was doing a commission deal on. And then he decided, well, why don't you just build me a website? So I did that. And I said, well, your website's built, but it's not going to do anything unless you do SEO. So he's like, okay, here's 700 bucks. Let's do some SEO. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's just progressive. I mean, always talking to people about what you do. You know, there's people in this group that this is a second thing that they're doing in the background and they're not telling anybody because their real job is this and they don't want their family to know. You know, that's bullshit. Tell everybody what you're doing yeah. and make it a priority. Tell them it's tell them how great it is and how it's blowing up for some people. And yeah. the other thing is, you know, just wait. And if you haven't done it yet, 
wait until you actually make a difference in somebody's business. That's when it really becomes real. Yeah. Because I mean, I've got this insulation kid. He's he just turned 32. Oh, well, some of y'all might be 32. I say they're a kid, but anyway, uh, just turned 32, but his business was terrible. And when I when I first get got him hooked as a just on the hook and giving him some free leads, I'm listening to these calls and I'm like, oh my God, that's the worst call I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, dude, you can't handle your calls that way. Yeah. I took over his calls. I took over his calls for a month because he's saying, well, I'm not sure this is worth $2,000 a month. I'm like, well, you're blowing the call. That's the problem. So I took over the calls. I recorded them. I let him listen to them. I'm like, look, this is how you handle your business, you know? Huh. So I taught him. And I mean, we did, uh, we did 45 grand in August. Wow. 45 grand. The kids, he, he went and bought a new trailer. He went and bought a new machine to do his blow-in insulation. I mean, he's buying equipment that he, he used to rent the stuff from Home Depot yeah. and go out to do work every day. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. You need to be a real business. So I taught him how to be a real business. Now he's making bank. Loves paying me my 2000 a month. I love it, dude. Well, and it's true. That's a good point that you said that sometimes you, you're looking for the right business owner you're not going to find it. You have to make them into the business owner that you want them to be. And, and some guys don't want to be taught. Some guys are so stuck in their ways. They're like, you don't know anything, but the guys you want to work with are the ones that are like humble and are like willing to take criticism. Cause if, if I'm doing something wrong, I hope someone would tell me so that I can make more money. Like I, I would hope that I would be able to do that. So well, that's, trust me, I, I wasn't looking to become a mentor for this business, but I've been yeah. through 15 other businesses in the area that all sucked. So I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to meld one into what I need. And I know. So far. So to help you out, I love it. Yeah. So now uh, we have conversations all the time. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, if he needs I help, he calls me and asks me my opinion, you know. And that's cool that you have that relationship with him too. That goes a long ways. Right. That's cool. Okay. So he says, I've got leads coming through the door, but prospecting and following up is an area I'm looking to improve. Any, uh, any advice on that prospecting or follow up? Uh, I mean, it's taught well in the paid group. If you're not in the paid group, join the paid group. That'd be my first advice. Mm -hmm. uh, but if, if that's, if, if you're looking for something else, I mean, uh, I see a lot of people in these groups, uh, subbing and out partnering with other people that are already doing it. So, I mean, if you want to give up half your revenue, you know, partner with somebody. Yeah. If you're desperate enough to do, do whatever you got to do. All right. I would just say well, one thing that I would say with prospecting is like, stop acting so ag like aggressive and like, like just relax, like take a deep breath. Like, let the owner speak. Like I, I sometimes will call the very first call of every day. I feel like it's always bad. And, and it's the reason why is because I get so excited. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to hook this guy. I'm going to hook this guy. And I start blabbering my mouth and I'm like saying all this stuff that doesn't matter. And it's like, just relax, like let them talk. Like you need to talk slow, like be confident. And then at the end of the day, like give me a little pullback. Like, I don't, I don't care if you don't want this, but like, tell me, like, just be very, uh, confident in the way that you approach this because I think sometimes we act a little salesy and people can sniff it out from a mile away so you just need to step back well and I'll be honest I've been doing a lot of text marketing too and I, I was totally against it because I don't think it's as personable but the speed with which you can hit a lot of people just doing a blanket text market it uh, works I mean it works so well it's the first way I go anymore I mean that's it I can spend 15 minutes and have 15 business owners with a text in their, on their phone. And, you know, five of them are going to call me back before the end of the day. So then I'll have that conversation and have the personal level, Yeah. but you know, just getting the feelers out, hit them, hit them. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Just, just do whatever. What do you usually say on those texts? Is it like a, Hey, like, I know this is weird. Like I'm doing this and this, like, how do you go about Exactly. I say, hey, this might be weird, but I was working with another guy in the area and he moved or he shut his business down. Just make something up. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, uh, but I was bringing him some leads and uh, he's not handling or 
I, I mean, I've, I've been honest. I've had some guys drop the ball on the lead side and yeah. I've just been honest with them on the next text. Hey, I've been working with a guy. He's not really getting the job done. He's not closing deals. I was wondering if you're a closer. You that's know? it. Yeah. That's it. And he's like, uh, yeah, what are you looking for? Uh, 15% commission. If you'll give me a commission, I'll bring you business. Sure, let's do it. You know, right. start the relationship there. Get them to whatever the niche is. If it's a thousand dollar niche, if it's a two thousand dollar niche, get them to two thousand in commission and just say, hey, you know, uh, you're getting ready to go over what I'm really looking for on a flat fee. So why don't we just do two thousand flat fee and I'll just yeah. keep bringing you business. Yeah. You know? Well, and make, and make the, like, you could start out commission, but make the flat fees sound be- like good. Like, you know, like you can make it. So it's like, like we're doing commission, like I'm making a lot of money, but like, doesn't this sound better? It's more like consistent. Like you can almost make it so it's better for you. Well, it's just like with this tree deal, you know, settling at 3000, but knowing we're going to five, yeah. always be talking about the next thing. You know, there's, there's no reason to make it a secret. And then, plan this bomb you're going to drop in the future just start talking about it now you know mm-hmm. hey we'll start at 15 percent commission just so you know that i'm real and that i can bring you business mm-hmm. but hey i'm really only looking for two thousand flat fee i'd rather do flat fee but let me prove myself to you first yeah, yeah. that's and cool if you quickly get them to that two thousand dollar mark now it's in their mind they're thinking oh hell i'm getting ready to pay more than the two thousand he offered me anyway Yep. Let's just go to flat fee. Make it their choice. Yep. That's but if true. you never yep. talk yep. about it, if you never talked about it to begin with, they don't know that that's the deal. Yeah, so. that's so true. A lot of wisdom in that. That's so true. Um, Ryan says, I feel the same, Gabriel. I have one site um, going that's number two on Google, but it's only putting pulling one or two leads a week. So I'm in a limbo with struggling to want to call some businesses, but not wanting, uh, but not sure I picked the right niche and area. Got to get back to work and go rent and rank make what sure what niche is like that it. uh he hasn't say ryan what niche what niche are you in if that's concrete two a week is beautiful baby that's plenty of money i know it's like bro though they should be able to close those uh and adam says say to take the bull by the horns isaac said how many leads on average do your websites that your renting generate on a weekly or monthly basis i have no freaking idea I got 40 of them. Have yeah. You done I wouldn't worry so much. I would just. Yeah, it sounds like somebody's focusing on details, you know, who cares? Yeah. Don't worry about the number. A month. So true. Honestly, this is, this is my thing is as far as leads go, like undersell it. Like it doesn't matter if you're getting 10, it doesn't matter because the goal is you're hopefully going to get more than that anyways. But like, if you're only getting 10, then you don't tell them a number just say, Hey, like, what if, what if I send you 10? What What if I sent you 12? Like you, you can't, I, I've oversold so many sites and I've lost clients because of it, because I was so confident in me getting a certain number, but what, well, then it gets slower. And then they, they, they're they asking me like, well, you only got me 10 this month and you said 15. I'm like, okay, Jack, like I, you know what I'm saying? Like in our minds, we know that it's going to be slow, but to them, if we give them a number, we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot here. Yeah, it seems like sometimes people just think this is going to be easy. You know, Google is not your friend. Google's the enemy, unfortunately. I mean, they'll bite you in the ass just like anything else. And they bit me numerous times. I've landed a client and then my leads dried up. And, you know, you can cry about it and quit and mope. and Or you can just keep going. Just move on. It's going to happen. It is going to happen. It's reality. They change the model all the time. The algorithms change. Whenever we get things going great, they're going to move the rug out from under us. And then you got to go back to work and do it again. It's yeah. not a big deal. You just got to do it. Let's keep going. So uh, Ryan said piano moving. He said, I picked the wrong niche. Yeah, I, Ryan, I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do, I don't know how much money there is in piano moving. I would, I would definitely stick to the basics, especially for your first deal. Obviously, like if you want to go do other stuff later, but I would definitely try getting another deal in something else. Oh, and then he said, next deal I'm going to uh, going into and tried and true concrete and tree service niches like I was supposed to. Yeah, I wouldn't overthink it, Ryan. Like, it doesn't need to be those exactly. Like, you could even do, like, a fencing, like, whatever, spray foam installation, like, whatever you want to do. But just 
Yeah, you got to think that is it is it high ticket? Is it medium to high ticket? Is it bone driven? Like, does it kind of hit the criteria? Like, it's no secret what like niches we go into. Like Nick on his uh, YouTube basically talks about all of them. So yeah, I would probably avoid that one. Tried and trues landscaping. I mean, I I did a landscaping site for a guy, and uh, his very first deal was an apartment complex. He closed 180 grand a year maintenance contract. 180. Wow. Oh, dude. That's crazy. So, I was so pissed I didn't have him on commission. <laughs> You're like, actually, can we switch this for this deal? Right. Dude, that's so awesome. I've got him at two grand now. So he's he's coming in at two grand a month. So oh, he's not, not there yet, but he knows that's what he's going to be paying. <laughs> I love it, dude. Okay, Eric said, I started my first ad about a month ago, and I'm probably getting about one call a week. However, they seem to be all really small jobs. I've been hesitant to reach out to business owners until I get a more substantial job to call them with. Do you think that's a good idea? I'll let you answer that. Uh, I mean, so I, I wouldn't run ads if it's small ticket, small jobs. I mean, what, what's the niche? Did he say? He didn't, he didn't say. Eric, yeah, what niche are you in? I've got a bunch of handyman sites, obviously, because I'm a handyman. So I've got a handful of those. Um, the reality is there are lots of small jobs. So, you know, what I'm trying to do is uh, get my SEO on point on those sites, get plenty of leads coming in organically, and then just sit them with somebody for 600 bucks a month, something like that. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, if it's low ticket and small jobs, that's what you do. You're not going to run ads and make it's just not not going to fit the model all the time you know but it doesn't mean disband it i mean leave it out there let it stew for a while do some seo on it get some backlinks get some you know citations going and uh let it let it uh build and then uh you know just put a low ticket on it and there's still people out there that would love to have those leads so yeah you know, as long as it ends up being worth it you know, do the math. The math is simple. Yeah. Well, and I, this is, this is another thing I want to bring up is even if you do find a business owner and they're all worried about, Hey, like th this lead wasn't big enough or like, I didn't close it. Like you got to overcome that objection. The beginning, like, if you know, it's a small job, tell them, say, Hey, this is a small job. Like, this is not what I always get, but like, I'm going to send you this one, whatever. I don't expect you to close. I don't even care if you close it. If you do great. The point of me sending you these is so you know what I'm doing. So you can kind of yeah. overcome that one right off the bat. And in addition to that, you know, one of the things that caused me to take so long to really start hitting is not, not vetting these business owners. You know, yeah. I would get a few leads and then I'd start calling business owners and I'd throw them at the first person that said, yeah, I'll take them. Yeah. Okay. Did I ask any vetting questions that I, do I know if they're even capable of closing? Do I know if they're even capable of, handling what if i do get them 20 jobs can they handle it you know you got to start asking those questions early on because if you attach yourself to the wrong business owner first you're automatically going to waste a month there's no way getting out of it it's going to take you a month to know that it's not going to work why not figure that out up front you know don't just give them to anybody make sure they can handle it getting a deal is exciting but like for one month, like why? Like I, I literally, I've done that. Say I've landed a deal oh. in said one month, and I was like, I almost wouldn't have rather not had a. I mean, it paid for my ad, so I can't whine too much. But right. I was like, dude, I wasted so much time. Like now, I got to do with this again. Like I should have yes. just been more picky, taken my time, and then gotten this deal. You know, and I think it might just be that you got to close some deals to get the confidence to be able to do that. But yeah. you know, now that I'm there. Man, I would never go back and do it that way again. I mean, I'm making them, they're going to, they're going to tell me that they want my business before I just give it to them. Yeah. You know, that's so I mean, true. make them work for it a little bit. Yeah. I love it. Um, Gabriel said, don't overthink the volume. I have a site killing it and water well drilling and the average ticket is about 1200 or no 12,000. Oh yeah. That's a good niche. Imagine I like that. what four leads a month would do for one business, let alone. Yeah. And they can't, usually they can't do more than that. Like really like that's awesome. You, you got to kind of think of perspective. Like that's a pretty high ticket niche. If you ask it like, is a oh, high ticket brand. Niche. I've actually considered that niche. That's, yeah. that's a good one. 
I think that's awesome. Good. I'm glad that's working for you, Gabriel. That's that is sweet. Um, Eric said it was concrete. So like a smaller repair jobs, like sometimes sometimes you go through phases where, where sometimes you get repair jobs, but like if it's consistently, we might want to maybe take a look at like what these people are getting. Maybe your ad looks more like a repair guy. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you need to mix some stuff up. Do you have anything? Well, for me, for me, I just quit putting repair on my sites. I don't do it. I just don't want the repair work because it yeah. is it is the low yeah. ticket. That's not really what we want. It's true. Yeah. Just just stop doing it. Yeah. I totally get what you're saying. But yeah, Eric, I hope that answered it. A bunch of small. I wouldn't honestly, if this site has been nagging you, I would just freaking drop it. Let's get a new one going and uh and go with it because that's that's annoying. Or just fix it. Like you said, just make sure they don't get the buy. Get rid of the repair. Just get rid yeah. of the repair and keep the rest. Yeah, if you're getting leads, but just there's repair jobs, just, yeah, get rid of that. Um, Eric said, I've been waiting for a driveway or a patio or slab to call to come through. Yeah, you'll get one soon. Don't worry about it. So, sometimes it's weird. Sometimes I'll go four or five days, and then I'll get, like, three in one day. So, like, it, it just is very inconsistent, but just just do your best. You'll get it figured out. All right, man, it's been it, – it, that's all the question. It's been, like – just about an hour so is there anything final remarks like okay this is one question i want to ask before we go what would you tell yourself two years ago just starting out like what would what advice would you give yourself i would say don't look for the shortcut go straight into the paid course with nick and do exactly what it says step by step because i thought i was smarter than the whole thing because i already came from software so i thought okay yeah, I'm going to find a shortcut to make it faster. Cost me at least six months, probably cost me a year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, I wish I'd have just, you know, some of these people come in and they have no background whatsoever and they just plug into the training and they go zooming past me and so fast. That's kind of ticked me off a few times, but hey, good for them. I'm happy <laughs> for them. That's so true. You guys are closer than you think. Get in there, do whatever you got to do. If you're, if you have the money, you have the means, just go do it. Like get, get the course, just freaking start landing deals. If money's a problem, still talk to Nick. Like let, let's get you landing deals. Like I don't, there's no excuse why you shouldn't be landing deals. Nick is a very, um, a very understanding guy. All right. He's reasonable. Um, he's reasonable. Okay. But anyways, um, you guys are awesome. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for hopping on this, Brad. This was awesome. And if you guys have questions, hit Brad up. He's a great resource. And and use these people that I'm hopping on here. Like these are literally like I'm telling you who these guys are that are doing really well. Like, why not use them? Use them as resources. Like, obviously, don't suck them for information and whatever, because they don't have the time for that. But like, if you guys have questions, hit them up. Like uh, they're more than willing to help. Everybody in the group's helpful. Yeah. So true. Hey, Brad. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, thanks again. Hey, thanks, Porter. See you, bud. Yeah.